Welcome to another Mixed Media Tuesday and today I'm going to create a two-page spread on my Dilusions small journal. I still have a few pages to finish off this little book and uh, for today I'm going to start with this All and Create stencil. This is a big stencil, it is an A4 size in European standards or about a letter size in US. This is one of my favorite techniques. I keep on uh, going back to it again and again. Applying some embossing paste through the stencil is going to give me a white on white effect. At first, however, when I apply my paint on top, it's going to pick up the paint and create a lovely texture. I'm not going to cover up completely the whole page. I'm just mainly staying on the edges. I absolutely love the design. This is very versatile. It consists of smaller and bigger circles. And I will repeat the same process on the other page. Now, the paste that I'm working with is my favorite Altenew embossing paste, which is quite porous when it dries, although it keeps its shape. And I love that it doesn't resist the paint that you add on top. However, the only thing that you have to do is to wait for it to dry. Now, I'm kind of an impatient crafter and when I make a step, I want to move on to the next one without waiting. That's why I'm using my heat gun. If you overheat that embossing paste, it's going to bubble up on you, which uh, sometimes is a great effect if you want to have lots and lots of texture. Now, my paste is uh, dry enough. It isn't completely dry, but I'm going to pretend that it is and I will move on. For my background today, I'm working again with the Stress Oxide Sprays. I kind of uh, cannot stay away from them lately. I find them so easy and I love, absolutely love the results on my journals. So anyway, I'm going with uh, Speckled Egg and I'm going to spray the pages, both of them, all over the place. Always make sure to shake the bottles well before you spray. And I usually go with two colors for my background. This time I'm going to add some brown. I'm not going with vintage photo, however. This is gathered twigs. I want to keep my brown mainly on the sides. And although they look quite vibrant at the moment, you will see that they are going to dry completely dull with a different look at the end. So I'm going to use my heat can. I'm going to make sure that this is completely dry. And then you can go ahead and add more layers if you want to. I'm adding a little bit of that brown again and I'm also going to add some splashes using the same color. Making backgrounds for my art journals is one of my favorite things to do when I'm starting an art journal and sometimes I don't even care about what the focal point is. I'm just having fun playing with my mediums. However, I was making an effort to keep it quite dull. Now for my focal point, I'm going to work with this All and Create stamp set that gives you those different wings. One is quite uh, mechanical, the other one is more organic. There are smaller wings as well. This is quite of a big stamp that is going to make a great impact as a focal point. It gives you a lady and you can combine her with the bigger or the smaller wings. There is also a big border which is absolutely stunning as well as a smaller one and more stamps that you can play with for creating interest on your background. So I'm going to start with a big border stamp here and I'm going to stamp that with black archival ink on my pages. Now I'm going to stay mainly on the edges. I'm not going for the perfect impression just like always. I like to keep things quite organic and I'm not going to re-ink my archival ink. I like that it is this uh, specific pad is quite um, dry, so it's not going to give a very vibrant impression of black on my page, which is exactly what I'm going for. The stamps that I'm playing with today is designed by Olga, my friend Olga Heldwein. It's called Take Flight. And uh, it's not one of the newest releases by All and Create. I think it is from the previous one. However, I have been holding on to it for quite some time now and I wanted to make a page. So today is the day. When I find a stamp set that has a big focal point, like the huge wings in uh, this one, for example, I cannot stay away from it. I just want to use it for one of my pages. So anyway, all I'm doing here is using uh, black ink and I'm going around the edges, inking up the edges with a darker ink to create my frame. This is going to cover up some of that inking that I did, some of that stamping, but it's going to be fine. It's just layers and create some texture and interest on the background there. 
And of course, I'm staying with my favorite techniques. These are the techniques that make me happy. So I did add some black splashes in this case. And I will finish it off with white splashes. These are not going to stay as white and vibrant as you see them at the moment. They are going to react with the oxide sprays underneath and they are going to end up quite dull. Here is a close up on how my background is looking at the moment. I'm going to leave this to dry and I will work on the focal points. First of all, I'm going to stamp my lady and I'm working with a black ink which is alcohol marker friendly. And I'm going to stamp her a couple of times just because I want to show you something. Depending on how you color her, you can have completely different looks. So for example, I'm going to show you how I'm going to give her jeans as well as a yellow t-shirt here. Or you can keep her naked. By being creative, you can have so many different looks from one stamp set and really make the most out of it. And I'm not going to bother you to death by showing you how I did all the coloring. Just use your favorite mediums and color it in. It can be your markers, it can be your watercolors, your colored pencils. Just go for it. Once I had everything ready, I did use my scissors to fuzzy cut them. And you can see here the completely different looks. I am not going to use today the one with jeans. However, I want to show you how amazing this girl is for creating a focal point for a card. So I'm going to combine her with the smaller wings and there are two included in the stamp set. But for my project today I'm going to work with the other lady, the one which is naked, and I'm going to combine her with the bigger wings. Now there is one mechanical wing and one organic wing from a butterfly. I'm going to use the same wing and I'm going to show you how you can reverse it. For now I'm going to create my background, my pattern paper, my own pattern paper, so that I can stamp the wing on top of that. I want to have the same look and feel as my background. That's why again I'm going with my oxides. Here I'm using spiced marmalade and fired brick. I'm just going to combine them randomly on a piece of mixed media paper. And that's where I'm going to stamp the wings later on. Now this is not going to end up as vibrant as you see it at the moment. If you want that vibrancy, you have to work with a different line of sprays. So for example, you can go with the dilution sprays, which are really, really vibrant. Now once I dry it, you will see how it becomes dull and gives you that chalky finish that I absolutely love. I cut my paper in half and I'm going to stamp the wing on one half. Now for this stamping I want to have the black lines nice and vibrant, that's why I'm going to use pigment ink. And one thing you need to keep in mind is that if you first stamp the wing and then apply oxides on top, they're going to kind of cover up the black lines. They will not disappear completely, but they are going to get a chalky finish on top of them and uh, it's not going to look nice. Now, I also love how big that wing is. It would make a great focal point also for a three-dimensional canvas or a shadow box. So I'm keeping that in mind for another project. Anyway, I'm going to use my scissors and cut out the wing and I do have one wing ready to go. Now I need to somehow reverse that stamp so that I can have the other wing, the right wing. For that, I'm going to use my jelly plate. I'm just going to make sure that uh, the wing fits on top of that and uh, it does fit if I do that on a diagonal. So let me place a paper underneath so you can see better what I'm doing. You can see my jelly plate isn't perfectly cleaned, but I always store it like that since it's always fun to have some extra layers of color from a previous project. Anyway, I'm going to stamp my wing on top of that jelly plate. For that I'm using Pigment ink. This is really important since you want that ink that you're going to use to stay wet for a while. Making sure that I have enough ink there, it's nicely inked up. And then I'm going to stamp the wing on the jelly plate, directly on top of that. Don't smoosh that too much. Just remember that you don't want to smoosh too much a sentiment, for example, otherwise it becomes too thick and kind of splotchy. So this is what I have up to now. All I need to do is to place the paper on top of that. And I'm going to have the perfect impression. It is really impressive how good that, that technique works. And you can use that to reverse all your stamps. Now all I need to do is to fuzzy cut it. 
My wing is quite big and I always like to cut the paper pieces that are going to go through the fold. That's why I did use my paper trimmer there. And now it's finally time to use my glue and put everything down. Now first I'm going to place the wings. Before sticking everything down, I always play with the die cuts, try to decide where I want them to go and once I'm happy with their placement, then I commit and stick everything down. Now you see here I didn't even bother to fuzzy cut that wing completely because I knew that it's going to go outside of the page, so I'm just going to use my scissors and trim it out. I'm also going to stick down my lady and she is kind of floating as she is at the moment, that's why I'm going to use a piece of washi tape. I'm just going to uh, tear it off and place it under her feet just to ground her somehow on my page. If you use washi tape and you find that it isn't sticky, always make sure to add a dot of glue underneath just to make sure that it's going to stay put. Now I don't care what that washi tape says, after all I am planning to use some stickers and stick them down. I will use a bunch of those stickers, these are from a booklet by Tim Holtz and I went with the black ones that have white uh, text. I went with motivational phrases and I usually go with a bigger saying on a page but for this one I decided to keep it quite small and simple and I used phrases such as don't forget to fly, love yourself first, just breathe and you will see them better in the close-up photos at the end of this video. Just like always I am using my white gel pen and I am drawing some outlines around my quotes as well as some highlights on uh, the wings and the girl. Now I'm using some scrap piece of paper to cover up the girl and I'm going to add some white splashes over the wings. This is going to bring one more detail from the background on top of my focal point, but I don't want to have those splashes on top of the girl. And that was the finishing touch, I'm going to call this project done. You can see here some close-up photos. I hope that you had fun today, that you got inspired. Just like always, down below you will find a full list of supplies that I used to create this project. Don't forget to like this video and also leave me a comment. Thank you all so much for joining me today and I hope you'll all have a lovely day.